Hello, I tested the Belkin 200 watt adapter several weeks back and it was a pretty good charger for a short time, but it seems like they have some issues either really fast when you get it or they work fine. Today is the 112 watt version of the newer adapter. Will this have similar problems or will it be a bit better of a performer? To answer the question in the icon right off the bat, it's 112 watts because it has an always on 12 watt USB A port. That never turns off, even if the other ports renegotiate. So as usual, I will go through this charger and check it for thermals, efficiency, and the general performance. I do think it's interesting to have the extra always on port, but did it sacrifice something to add that port? I would like it more if it was all USB-C, but can't win them all. There's an affiliate link which earns me a couple of percent, but costs you nothing if you buy from the same place in the description, as well as links for more information. Many thanks to my patrons and channel supporters. The detailed data is on Patreon. The Belkin 112 watt charger with four USB ports, 3C and 1A, is up today. This charger comes with a warranty paper, but no other information. No mention of the ports or how it distributes power. So that means we're relying on the text on the device itself for the specifications, which is fine. You probably won't be taking the instructions with you anyway. This charger has a safety listing and the six in a circle. The safety listing is important because this means the device went through some kind of validation testing to make sure the device will fail in a more safe manner. Doesn't mean it's better, just reduces the risk of using it. The six in a circle is an energy efficiency mark that states the charger meets some minimum criteria for efficiency and idle power usage. As usual, I'll be testing that. In general, the modes of operation are unique with this charger. It does lack a 12 volt mode, which is common now, but one of the ports does not renegotiate. The USB-A port stays on. The charger has uneven power sharing with more than one USB-C port used. It really seems to be made for a few lower power devices and one laptop, which is fine. It is trying to be an all around charger for your devices for one person. When plugging it in, the idle power consumption looks good. And once some cables get plugged in, we can see that it renegotiates the USB voltage levels with plugs and unplugs of the other USB-C cables. The USB-A port is unchanged by the other ports though. You can use this with the USB-A to C cable to charge devices that are five volt compatible. In terms of its basic performance, the charger as an independent island looks not bad. Achieving high 80s percent efficiency for a mass produced product is an accomplishment, but is it enough to make it just functional? The DC voltage is fairly stable and the overall level is basically right on the rating. So in terms of being compatible with your devices, it shouldn't create too many issues. You can see that the middle of the charging turns on the power factor correction. You can see this when the power quality score suddenly jumps up. So at lower power levels, it does not turn it on in any of the modes. The efficiency does have a peak around 50% of the load. And so as the power level goes up, the efficiency dropping means this charger is probably being pushed a little too hard and it's going to likely run into some issues with the next test. Thermally, this charger got hot fast and didn't really have the surface area to get the heat out. It overheated and shut down at the rated load in 30 minutes. I tested the isolation. I didn't film it. It was fine. But after the poor thermal result, it's basically over. The efficiency tells you what you need to know. Okay, time to compare some chargers. I picked some of the better performers to use for the comparisons. I've only ever tested one other 112 watt charger and that is not even worth mentioning. In terms of weight, the four port charger from Belkin is fairly light. At 242 grams, it is in line with the other chargers at this power level. The lighter weight does mean if it can't get the heat out, it will overheat. There's also not much thermal mass. The size of this adapter is right in line with other chargers as well. The single port Anger Nano 100 watt charger is very small and light, but again, it's only one port. In terms of value, the Belkin charger isn't too expensive. The value looks pretty good, but based on the performance, you are getting what you pay for here. If the value is adjusted to what it really is, more like a 60 watt charger, then it's not so great. The idea of getting the power adapter down to this price point is impressive, but it goes with the territory. Built down to a price is thoroughly in play with this one. When looking at the idle graph for this, the older Insignia charger is a bit worse than the others. The rest are all pretty good though. Very low idle power consumption is pretty common for chargers now. 
they've basically all optimized to be very low power draw in an idle state. These chargers do tend to do good even in a low power state like an active charger left plugged in but not doing anything. So no complaints about the Belkin here. The average power consumption graph shows the main issue with this charger. The chargers that have higher efficiency tend to run for longer and operate cooler. It's a small difference, but they all get hot. But being 89% efficient, the Belkin just can't keep up with the competition here. This caused the charger to shut down fairly quickly at 30 minutes of runtime before power off. The Insignia technically is more efficient, but that's a fake number because it lacks power factor correction. It's really worse. In both cases, it's a big gap to higher efficiency chargers though. There are research projects and development kits that can beat all of these, but they aren't real products you can buy. Conclusion time. Okay, well, it's another charger, another one with a pro moniker, and as others have done, it's anything but. It is technically better than the only other 112 watt similar charger I looked at, which was from Insignia, but it's not good. Why did they bother making this new model of charger when it doesn't offer any performance advantage over other chargers? It's in paper packaging, but the charger is e-waste. 30 minutes of runtime at rated power is not good enough. It technically meets the other requirements for efficiency, but that isn't enough to be a good charger. There are hundreds of bare minimum chargers I've looked at and none of them make the grade either. In terms of what I use for a charger, some of the ones I use for comparisons in this video are ones I use like the Anchor 240 watt, the Satoshi 165 watt, the Bassi's 100 watt GAN 3, and the Apple 140 watt charger. There are always more, but yeah, they are big chargers, but they're efficient. And as you know, that means less heat, which is the biggest problem for this charger. The Belkin charger is a skip from me. Thanks for watching. There's links in the description. Goodbye.